Hi, everyone. Welcome to Live with Janome. I'm Ann Hine. I'll be right with you. Just getting a few last minute things done. So welcome, welcome. I know it takes a couple minutes for everyone to get settled and find the page and get all set. Hi, Jerry. Welcome. All right, I think I'm going to put my, uh, we'll change this here and put this on. There we go. There I am. Hi, everyone. So welcome to Live with Janome. As I said at the top, I'm Ann Hine. I'm the embroidery software specialist for Janome America. And uh, today we're talking about decorative stitching over seams. And it seems like a you know pretty easy thing, and it, it really is. There's a couple of tools you can use to make it easier for you. And everybody will have, as I always say, you'll always have a different way, maybe a better way than I do it, but that is okay. Um, we're going to be talking about a couple different feet, and I have some examples of those behind me here at the machine, so we'll be going there shortly. But how is everybody doing? Let's see, we have people from all over. I do have my comments up, so if you have questions today, be sure to post them, and I will definitely come back later or answer them as I go. Can't always answer as I go. But we are talking about stitching in the ditch, actually with a decorative stitch. Now, I do have a sample of um, stitching in the ditch. These are my little decorative, these are some little decorative shorts. I don't know who wears these, but anyways. But when I created these, when you put this facing in, you can stitch it in the seam right here. So this is where you would use your ditch foot, okay? And we have two different ditch, you can't even see. I'll show the seam on this side. Let's see over here, if I can get it there. And you can see I stitched, you know, right in the seam to hold that in it. And it makes a beautiful, um, you know, you don't even see it when you get it done. You can't even see in the seam there that I did it. So it makes a nice little uh, a ditch stitching there. And then I did wear in the center here. And that just helps keep my facing from popping up keeps it there really nice. I didn't have, sometimes people will hand stitch over here on either side of their seam, um, but I didn't have to. I just used my ditch foot, put that little bar in and used it right from there. So let me show you a picture. I don't, I don't have this foot and let's see how this shows. Oh, good. I don't have this foot. This is the, uh, for some reason, I had this foot somewhere along the line, but I'm not sure where it is. And this is just two different views of our ditch, uh, ditch foot. This one snaps on your machine. So it's, there's a nine millimeter and a seven millimeter. And does everybody know what that means, the nine and the seven? So that's that space when you look at your, let's say your A foot, and you see that oval, and you're in a nine millimeter machine, that means that space is nine millimeters. And then we would have 91 little positions to put our needle, okay? Seven millimeter would be, uh, that their space would be smaller. So there is one of these for both your nine millimeter and your seven millimeter. And you definitely want to make sure you get the right one because then you have the proper space there for your stitching. You don't want to hit the foot and break something. And also it will snap on better. Um, you can't put a seven millimeter on a nine millimeter machine. The ankle is just not, it's not wide. It's not, the, the foot uh, isn't, well, uh, what am I trying to say? The ankle is too wide for the foot to fit on there if you're trying to put a seven millimeter on a nine millimeter. Whew, maybe I need more coffee today. I'm just not sure. All right, so let's see what else is going on out here. Make sure everybody's doing okay. My volume is good. Everybody can see okay. Seems all right. If so, you can just give some little thumbs up. That's really good. Okay. Um, what else? So those are the ditch uh, quilting feet. Ditch feet. We also have one for the AccuFeed. Now, if you have um, the AccuFeed like this, it's actually on my machine. We're going to switch over to there in a minute. Let me show you. If you have this AccuFeed, 
Let me find my switcher here. If you have this AccuFeed, I will zoom in here and turn my light on for my machine. Get my chair out of the way. There we go. So this one, you can see, is our big one. And if I take it off, we do have this in a different model for our um, 6,600 and 7,700. Um, but after that, when we get to the 67, they, we all went to this one, the 89. I think we started with this, with the 8,900, the 15,000. So this is the holder portion of it and it hooks into your machine and you can actually set the rate um, of the feed dogs which are right here. This has feed dogs right here. This comes in different sizes. So we have an AccuFeed, this is the wide. We have a narrow and we have an HP2. So your HP2 would work with your HP foot. Today I have on my zigzag plate, it's the oval one, because I'm going to be doing things with, with, so I wanna make sure I have that. And I'm gonna bring my iPad over so I can see what's happening in case some disaster happens. I tend to have them when I'm some days, I don't know. All right, and the great thing about this foot is these parts come off. These little toes or shoes or soles, whatever you wanna call them. And they have all kinds of nice letters. This one says um, SD for st stitch in the ditch. There is a quarter inch one, there's one a regular one, and there's also, um, let me see, uh, for the big one. There are others. This one is OD. Now let me see if I can get it under here. Oh, there we go, this is better. It's always hard showing feet. And I have a little bad nail there. So this is the quarter inch one. You can see there's a little line there. And when you set it, a little uh, bar, when you set your machine, you wanna turn on your AccuFeed so that it will show this foot on the screen of the machine and you'll be able to adjust it then. And on a, like a 15,000, there's a knob on the side of your machine. On our CM17, and I believe the M7 is the same way, we have it on the screen and I'll show you that. So this would be your A foot. And there's an open toe one in here. Here's the open. Okay, some machines come with all of these. Some only come with some of them. So you have those extra ones. A quick look at our narrow foot. This one comes with this uh, attachment here, that's sort of the regular foot, and it has one little feed dog back there, and it has an attachment for zipper foot. And then of course, HP2. But if you, are, if you have a um, 6600, a 7700, you have a foot that your AccuFeed has these two little prongs in the back that come down, and you have to put the whole, you'd have a whole thing like this you'd put on and the, those feed dogs would come in and snap into it. So if you have that foot, that's fine too. You can use that as well. Um, uh, Jean, no, the AccuFeed is um, proprietary to Genomi. It has this little hook that fits up into the back of your machine. So when I go to put this on, I typically, I don't like to take my screw all the way out. I will wiggle the foot up on there, push that little piece up on the back, I'll finger tighten, and then I'll use my screwdriver. Hi, Wanda, welcome. Let's see who else is here today. Let's see, sometimes I miss people. Hi, Marty, there we go. So I have it on there and then I will tighten it with my screwdriver um, because you know there's moving parts here so you don't want it to wiggle off. Now to take these off and replace them, I find it easiest if I have it on the machine, and then I can just kind of pull down and forward and it comes off. It will slide back on right here. So the little feed dogs are there. So I'm gonna, there's these little uh, pieces on either side. I'm gonna slide it up here, put those little uh, pieces in and then just push it back and it's on. Really easy to do, really easy to do. And this has the center part for stitch in the ditch, which the snap-on one has that same thing too. 
okay? So you can, and you can use your AccuFeed foot with decorative stitches. Many times we're told, no, no, we can't do that. Um, it's not right, doesn't work. It does work. And what we've done in our M7 and our CM17, we've uh, changed on the screen of the machine so that it will, um, you'll see the AccuFeed there and you'll be able to adjust it where on some of the machines we adjust on the side of the machine. So I'm gonna slide over and show you the screen so I don't forget. Here we are over here. All right, so on my screen, when I want to take, when I wanna use AccuFeed uh, normally, I would select this here. And it says right here, make sure proper foot holder. And it's only gonna give me straight stitches. All right, and if I needed to adjust the speed, it would be right here. Typically, um, when we first had AccuFeed, it really is, it's a lot for your, your straight stitching and not decorative, but we do have it set for decorative as well. So to go to decorative, what I have to do, let's just turn that off. I have to come up here to my function menu, the three little bars here. And then, and I know there's some glare. I was trying to figure out, I had a piece of paper here the other day that was blocking the glare. So hopefully it's not too glary. Let me see what people, if people are complaining. Oh, let's see. Uh, nope, I think we're doing okay. All right, so see on here, we have a page of things here. And this is my um, CM17. In your um, M7, you'll have a little menu on the side and you'll select it and it will take you to something like this. You may have different things in here. Your machine information is here. Here's how to turn on your manual dual feed, quilt block advisors in here and quick stitch select is here as well. Plus down here, you have some um, tabs to reset the arm of your embroidery machine. So I'm just going to turn on the AccuFeed and then here's where you can adjust the rate of the speed of your AccuFeed. So if you are sewing something with, um, say you have uh, minky on, on one and cotton on the top or however you put that in there and you remember you get to the end of your seam and you have one longer than the other. So this is where you would, you would, not in, you would come in here and adjust it. So on a other machine, on a, our 15,000 and our 8,900, 9450 9, might have it outside too. You would go to the side of the machine and there's a dial. It's very much like the differential for your um, serger. So it changes the rate of speed. Now, if you notice, I have mine set at four. For some reason, I, I kind of played with it a little bit today to uh, work with it. But what I'm talking about today is, let me just zoom in this way. I think it'd be better. Here we go. Is stitching over a seam like this. And I have some over here. And I did some different samples. This one here, I just, I didn't use stabilizer. I just kept the one seam folded over and I stitched it. And it seems to be pretty good. This one here, I kept the seam folded over as well, but I added stabilizer and I think it stitches better. And I just changed color down here just to see. And this one here is my favorite. This one is, um, I opened the seam and I didn't use stabilizer. I'm gonna go on this side. And it stitched nicely. I think, with just that little bit of seam under there, it's enough to stabilize the fabric. But do a little test on your fabric before you stitch because you can add a bit of stabilizer like I have here, even with an open seam. So just put a piece back there and you can tear it away. So that's that one sample. I'm gonna show you stitching here in just a minute, but I wanna show you my other samples. If you have this foot, this is the G foot, this is blind hem. Okay, it looks like it, it might work. It, but it has a little thing right here. So I, you know, I don't know. Um, but this is uh, your, I think, blind hem foot. It looks like your uh, ditch foot, but it's not. All right. So here's an idea of one of the reasons why you might want to um, 
stitch in a ditch with your decorative stitches. So you can add, this is a, an old block I have, and I'm actually, this is my sample side that I'm testing on. This is the side I'm going to use. I'm gonna take it apart and use just the far side of this. I did have some big bumps here to deal with. And what I did is I went to my garage and I covered the top and the bottom. And I used a like a, a mallet that had a little bit of rubber on it. And I pounded it down here just to make it uh, a little bit flatter. And I probably could do it this one here. I did a little bit better right here. And I did, I used an iron on fusible here just to hold everything in place for me as I was going. So this is a little bit flatter. So you can see how it stitches right in there. Let me pull this in. So you can really change your blocks. My thought was this is a, an older block with older fabrics and maybe not what I like. So on this side, I might use some really bright threads to like make it pop. And then I will use just this side of it. And possibly, because I've been doing some in the hoop bags, that's what I'm teaching over on the artistic digit, well, in artistic digitizer, I may just use this um, for one the front of one of my bags. I just don't know yet. So I was kind of interested. I have a whole stack. I'm sure we all have blocks that we did at one time. I used to do a lot of block swaps. So um, I have a bunch of those. <laughs> Valerie, great camera work. Whew, don't get ahead of yourself there, Valerie. Anything could happen. It's me. It's me, you know. So, so anyway, so here we go with those. So you can do your quilt blocks. I did a, um, I have a shirt that I pulled out of my closet. Let me get this under here. There we go. Try not to block the light so you can see. And I just did right down the edge of there with just a little touch of color, not too much that it screams, hey, I'm here, just a little bit of color. It gives me an option to add. I do have spots up here. I can add some more. And I do have pockets, but you know, as a woman, I, I don't really care for pockets on the front of my, my clothes. I don't think I wanna add any more attention stitching around here, but everybody's different. So you can do that to yours if you want. So if you have seams that you want to stitch along, you can definitely do that. It got me to thinking to some projects that before you finish them, maybe you're working on um, a bag or something like that, and there's some seams in it, you could, before you get anything closed up, you could go and put some decorative stitches along your seams. Makes it easy. I want to show you one thing before we get started. I'm actually going to stitch in the in the middle. Well, maybe I'll stitch in this one. Um, we'll sample in two of them. We'll stitch on one with stabilizer and one without. What I want to show you is on your machine, you do have uh, these buttons right here. And the other thing is if you have a smaller machine, maybe a 3160, uh, 5300, something like that. You can use uh, a ditch, I believe there's a ditch foot for those machines, and you could do the same thing with those machines with your decorative stitches. You have narrower ones, but we do have, um, and you'll have these two buttons too. We have the reverse button and we have the lock button. Now they have um, other uh, things that they do besides just lock and reverse. When you're stitching and you have a combination or say you're doing a, a design that's a car and as you come down I have to be careful because that light comes on sometimes when you come down to the end of your seam let me get my oops oh hang on Valerie you doomed me there we go sorry all right so when you come down your seams um, you can use the lock button to finish off that design. If you're at the end and you don't want to go off, you can use the reverse button and it deads the stitch. So reverse will end it, boom, right there, anywhere. If you stopped in the middle, it's going to stop right there and lock. If you touch the lock stitch, it will finish the combination. So if you have three stitches that you're doing, maybe a heart, a diamond, and a flower, and you're at the diamond, it's gonna finish the flower and then it'll lock off. If you needed it to stop sooner, you would hit the reverse and it would lock, it would lock off. 
So it's going to finish it if you hit the lock. It's going to dead it if you use the, um, what do you call it? The uh, reverse. All right, I'm just gonna see why this, it changed its lighting all of a sudden. I swear, I tell you, these things just don't like me some days. Oh, here we go. Let me get that to turn on. To turn off, come on, off. All right, we'll go with that one. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, maybe. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna stitch along here. I'm gonna pick a decorative design. I have my uh, AccuFeed, manual AccuFeed chosen. Let me make sure it's on and okay. And I'm gonna go out here to my decoratives. I'm just gonna pick one of these stitches I had before. Oh, you know what I wanna show you? Before we get too far, let me let me show you a key that's on my 15, on this machine. You have it on your fifteen thousand as well. So right here, this is like a page, a paper. When you touch that pa paper, look what you get on your screen: all your stitches, and you can page through these stitches. Let me just get the camera up. I can use these page turns to move through my stitches easily. Sometimes I have to use the, yep, I have to use the little stylus. Here we go. The 15,000 has this as well, and the CM, then the M7. So you can page through here, which I find very handy because I can see all my designs and I can say, ooh, that's the one I want. And I'm in combination right here. I'm going to turn combination off, combination on. I'm going to set my uh, foot to land down. And maybe I want, let's see, let's go back. That one is the one I had, and I think I did this one. I put those together. Okay, so let's go over here, and I'll make sure I have my AccuFeed on and set to go, and I do. Let's see here, put that there. Everything looks good. All right, so let's do this. I'm going to stitch along and then I am going to turn, I'm going to touch the lock button so you can see what happens with the lock button. And I'm still trying to get this thing to turn off. It doesn't like the, okay, let's zoom in a little bit. Oh my God. Where's my zoom? There we go. All right, let's do that. Get the camera closer. All right, so you can see what I'm going to do. I'm gonna put this little part here right on my ditch. You see that? It's right there on the ditch. Now I'm like a mile away from my machine, so we'll see what happens. All right, I put my foot down. I can still adjust. With my uh, M7 I, or my CM17, I do have that thumb wheel here, which I really like. And I'm gonna pick my foot up one more time because this loop of thread is going to drive me crazy. Let's put it to the back. There we go, okay. Now I'll put my foot back down. All right, so we're gonna stitch along. And I use my start stop button when I'm working. And that loop is going to give me a problem. You know, let's do this. Yeah, look at that. We came undone. All right, so I'm all good up there. Let me lock and do this again. Oh, I love that. All right, everybody's good. I went and opened up here and checked my take up because if it comes out of the take up, then, you know, disaster. All right, let's try this again. Here we are. Okay. 
And I'm going to move my speed down. I like the start stop button when I'm doing decorative stitches because it gives me a consistent speed rather than my foot control where I might be fast and slow, fast and slow. So you can see I'm just going to steer keeping this at my seam. I'm not really looking anywhere else. Now, if I want to stop right here, I'm going to hit the reverse. And it stopped mid-design. Let me cut that and show you. See how it stopped right there? So that's how you can stop at an edge very easily. If I get going again, I can restart at the beginning by touching the, there's a little box on my screen that I touch over there with the triangle. And I'm going to start again. So it does this little piece here. And if I hit the lock, my lock button I know is, it's gonna finish just that one. Let's start out again. There we go, it's restarted. And it's gonna finish that one. So let me see what's happening here. So see how easily it's stitched right in that ditch? Can we see that? And that was without stabilizer, just using one, one side. It did stitch very well. And this is really a rather light cotton, so I think that went well. So I'll show you the buttons. So up here, let me get this to focus. Oh my goodness, what's going on with this? There we go. So your lock button here, the circle with the dot, the bullseye, that will go to the end of your design and lock off. This one here, when you touch it, will lock off immediately. And I always think of it as that arrow going down, that means uh, stopping right here. It's gonna stop right here. So that's a good way to remember it. And then over here, when you're working with your combinations, which I have my combination turned on down here, it's the heart, it's the three hearts when you touch it goes over to the heart, the spade and the diamond. This little tab up here restarts you at the beginning okay all right and then when i let me see here oh if i needed to check to set my um my accufeed i would go back to my man my uh, three buttons here and i would change it right here on the screen and i'm sorry about the glare there's just like a lot of no matter what I do, there's a lot of glare for these. These screens are very glary. But you can change it right here. There's a little uh, minus and a plus. And I moved mine down to four. It's normally at five. So it seemed to work very well for me. All right. So let me see what else. If there's any other questions, show the buttons. AccuFeed foot with the stitch in the ditch. Oh, this is the other one I wanted to show you. Let's zoom in on this one. Uh, well, we'll try to zoom. Here we go. Oh, good. Hang on one second. Readjust. And let's put this here. So this is a convertible free motion foot. It's clear and it has these lines on it. Let me see if I can find something better to put it on against. Maybe this. Here we go. Clear feet are hard to show too. Here we go. So you can get this. It's called the Clear View Quarter Inch Foot Set. And what it what happens is it does have a ditch uh, attachment you can put on. This one here, oh, this might be the other one. There, the um, I have a nine millimeter one, it has a little bit bigger opening. You couldn't use this one because it has a, just one opening. You couldn't use this one with decorative. The other one has a wider opening, but you still, I would not recommend it for 
uh, using it for decorative stitches, even though it has this ditch attachment. And how this works, this is one of my favorite quarter inch feet. This comes off if you like to sew without a guide. And then now that we have a metal foot without a guide, you can do this. And then this goes back on right in here, like so, slip it up there, slip that down like that. So now you have a ditch, a ditch foot. Okay, so you can get a stitch in the ditch one for using with decorative stitches, a wide one. If you have this one, the clear view, excuse me, I have a sneeze in there. You can use this one um, for quarter inch piecing with this guide or stitch in the ditch with that guide, which is really handy. You, can, you know, not just stitch in the ditch. If you were doing some half square triangles, this works well too. This was one of our first feet that had a little uh, part right here that this grabbed onto. Because years ago when we had our quarter inch feet, the, what would happen is as you were working because we were pushing against it and we shouldn't, this would bend out. So now it has that little part there that keeps it from going out. This one is the um, clear view quarter inch foot set. It has little eighth inch marks here too. They're very handy for different things on this foot. It comes in both seven millimeter and nine millimeter. I don't have the number on this one, but if you did a Google search for um, clear view quarter inch foot set, you would see this one here. Okay. And the, uh, I do have my other one, but it had an accident. So I'll show you. This is a sad day when this happens. I think this, this got left under something and it broke. So this is the, the um, it's o, number OV for nine millimeter. And you can see this is a little wider, but it's off center. So I don't suggest it for using with decorative stitches. I would just use it for ditch, ditch quilting. Okay, it got crushed. It got crushed, I'm crushed. All right, let me see. I'm going to go back to the other camera. And I'm sorry, this I don't know what goes on with my camera, why it does this weird stuff with the light. I will put the other camera back on and move my iPad over just to see if there's any last questions before I go. And we'll see what time it is. Usually I run, run late, but oh, we're not too bad. We're right at Right at, right at the right time. All right, let's go back here. All right, so I'll hold this up one last time. This is for the stitch in the ditch foot that you would snap on with the ankle. And there are the numbers for the nine millimeter and seven millimeter if you don't have this foot already. I recommend it, I recommend it. Even if you have, ac I do love AccuFeed with it, but if you don't have AccuFeed, or you don't want to use your AccuFeed foot. Some people prefer because it's so big, they don't like it. This is a more manageable foot and you could definitely put some decorative stitches over your seams with there. And the reason, remember I mentioned earlier about the uh, blind hem foot. On this one, you can maybe see it here. The blind hem foot, that little black piece came back over into here. So it would really interfere with your stitches. So um, this would be a better idea than using your blind hem foot. Um, there might be other things we can use the blind hem foot for. All right, let me see what's going on. Hi, Laurel. Um, let's see if there's any other questions that I missed over here. Uh, let's see, let's see. Now, I don't know how many of you have played with your AccuFeed. Oh, Jean asked, AccuFeed for the Magnolia beginner. No, uh, when you're on a machine that doesn't have AccuFeed, you would use a walking foot. The AccuFeed foot is a walking foot, but like on steroids, it's better, it's better. But we still have our standard walking foot for all of our other machines, like the 3160, the Magnolia, um, I think the, the some of the Skyline series up through maybe S, I don't know, the S6 is that one where I think it changes, but um, some of our, our, our Skylines with the bigger numbers, they have um, AccuFeed with them, like the, uh, the S7. Let's see what else was here. Um, let's see. Everybody looks good. All right. I think I got all the questions. I'll go back down here. Uh-oh. Did I? Oh, it is the same. You know what? When I took it off the website, it showed that one. Darn it all. 
you know, thank you for that. You know what, Valerie, I will put, I'll put in the, com ah, let me put in, let me hold this back up. Well, you guys figure it out. I'm going to put in the comments the correct numbers so you have them. Or maybe one of my other Genome educators um, for, uh... oh, yes, the video will be, it'll be up to view, Pat, no problem there. All right, so, so good call on that, Valerie. I didn't realize I had the same number, and I just copy-pasted off a website, so I probably grabbed the wrong one. Um, so I will post the both of them in this in there as um, in the comments so you have them. Oh, Jerry's look. Jerry Finial is looking them up for me, so she'll post them in there for me. Thank you so much. Let me show you one more time. Someone wanted to know what button to press for AccuFeed. Okay. Now it depends on which. Um, let me go back to my camera. There we go. It depends on um, what machine you have. Okay, so let me go over to my screen. And let's let's get off of here. Let's turn that off. All right, so on my screen, when I want to go to AccuFeed, let me go back to straight stitch. Up here, I have to go back to straight stitch. Right here, this one here, it's two lines. Wait a minute. Yes, it's the it's the one with the two lines and the triangles over it. Can everybody see that? Right here. So once I do that, it gives me this little part on the screen right here. So I can adjust the rate. Now, if you're on a um, 15,000, you'll still see this, this light thing. I think it's at the top. And then you'll have a dial on the side of your machine that you can use to adjust your um, AccuFeed. All right. I don't know if anybody, see, I do have a machine with a dial. Don't look at my mess. I'm going to move really quickly. Get my ski clothes out. You see over here, this is my 7700. Right here, this dial is for adjusting AccuFeed. It's very much, when you look at it, it has the same little signals, just like a differential on your serger. So it's adjusting that upper feed so that it matches your lower feed better. Okay. All right. So let me go back here. So that turns it on for straight stitch. You can see I only have straight stitches there. On my uh, on the M7 and the CM17, you have to go to another menu. On the CM17, you go up here. And this is your function menu. And right here, you'll see manual feed setting. You want to turn it on. And then it says OK. Yep, I want to make sure I did OK. And then here, I can adjust my um, AccuFeed. So one of the things I should do, and maybe one of our other educators might do it, is a little thing on AccuFeed and when you're adjusting it, what it does. OK, so you can actually see how that works. So you can see there it is in my um, screen right there. And then when you open, you won't find it in here. Remember, if you look here, it's not going to be here. It's going to be back in the adjustment is back in the function menu. So this is your function menu, and this is your home, where you would find your ordinary sewing, sewing applications, and embroidery. Okay, let me just get out of here. There we go. All right, let me put this back over here. I'll double check my questions to see what's going on. And I'll actually sit down really quick. Okay, so almost missed the chair. There we go. All right, so there we go. That is stitching your decorative stitches over a seam. Do a little test is what, what I really what you should do is because when you're depending on and do it with the kind of seams you're going to be working with, you're going to stitch on a quilt. And I think it'd be a great way to highlight some of our quilts that you want to add maybe just a little more hidden pizzazz to them. You don't have to do the whole quilt. You can just do parts of it. You don't have to do the whole thing. So uh, it's just just make sure you're looking at your seams, especially, you know, like on those blocks I hit. Those are star blocks. They have lots of points coming together. If I was going to stitch a 
completely across one of those, I might be going over a lot of those humps and that might not look so great trying to get over those, your uh, stitch in the ditch, ditch might catch there, especially because you're doing so much stitching. It would do straight stitching fine, but doing all that forward and backward, you might have a little problem. So think about it, look at where you're going to stitch and um, cause that block I was doing, I'm just, I was just gonna go around the outside of it, the outside edge. And I'm actually going to do from this, from down in the point out, down in the point and out. So I'm just, I'm not gonna continue. I want to stop and start. I just want, I, I wanna move away from that corner just a little tiny bit. All right, so I'm gonna let everybody go. Guess what? I'm back here tomorrow, 3 p.m., same time, same bat channel. Um, and I'll be talking about, um, oh, what am I talking about? Uh, we're going to be doing the mystery quilt block finish up. And I have, I have mine going here. So you'll be able to see that. We're, get, we're very near at the end. Pretty much after tomorrow, we should be done. I have one little thing to show people on that. If you don't know about our mystery block, uh, you can go ahead and chime in tomorrow. Or you can pop over to the Janome Artistic Digitizer Facebook page where uh, we have it all over there. All right. So everyone have a great day. I will see you again tomorrow. So have a nice one. Bye for now. And thank you for joining me.